Hey YouTube, how's it going? Yak Science here with another OCHEM video. The topic today is going to be nucleophiles and electrophiles. It's a super fundamental topic when it comes to OCHEM. You're going to see it in virtually every problem you encounter. Uh, so let's just dive in. Basic principle, nucleophiles attack electrophiles. Okay, just have that ingrained in your head and we're going to talk about some differences uh, between these. Okay, let's talk about nucleophiles first. The word file means like or love and nucleo, you could think of nucleus, right? A positively charged nucleus. So what types of things love positive charges? What types of things are nucleophiles? Well, the answer is things with negative charge or sources of electrons, right? So what types of things can be sources of electrons? Well, let's start with the basic, right? A full anion, right? An anion is a species with a full uh, negative formal charge. So an example might be methoxide, right? CH3O minus. That oxygen has a full negative formal charge and all of these lone pair electrons can serve uh, as a source of electrons, right? To attack an electrophile. We'll get into that later. What else can be nucleophilic? Well, let's say you have a neutral molecule, but within that neutral molecule, you have lone pairs. Those two can be nucleophilic. So lone pairs. Okay, so an example might be water, right? H2O. This oxygen right here has two lone pairs. So is it a great nucleophile? Not the greatest, right? It's definitely not as strong as a full negative charge, um, but it is nucleophilic because it's a source of electrons, going back to this definition right here. Uh, and finally, a third thing that can be nucleophilic uh, is a pi bond, right? What is a pi bond? A pi bond is one of two bonds, right, in a double bond, or one of three bonds in a triple bond, right? You have a sigma bond and you have a pi bond. The pi bond can serve as a source of electrons because if you look at it, right, let's say a carbon double bonded to a carbon, this pi bond can serve as a source of electrons and attack uh, an electrophile. We're gonna get into these when we talk about uh, reactions with alkenes, but for now, just know that a pi bond can be nucleophilic. Okay, uh, now let's talk about electrophiles. They're kind of the opposite in a way. Electro, you could think of electrons as in negative charge and file again means like or love. So electrophiles like negative charge and what types of things like negative charge? positive charges, right? So electrophiles are um, electron deficient, okay? They're electron deficient, meaning they're lacking electrons. They, they want some electrons, right? And that's exactly why we say the source of electrons attacks the, the species that needs the electrons, right? So what types of things uh, want electrons? Uh, we said already positive charges. So cations, right? So we can think of a carbocation as one example, right? We're going to go into those when you we learn SN1 reactions. But essentially, it's a carbon with a full positive charge, right? You could totally see how a source of electrons, a negative charge, would definitely uh, be hungry for this type of species, right? A negative and a positive attract. Let me just erase this so we have more room. And so something else that can be electrophilic, right, is partial positives, partial positive charge. Right? So if we look at a ketone, for example, which something like this, right? We see an electronegativity difference between this oxygen and this carbon right here, right? The oxygen is more electronegative, so the electrons are drawn towards it, giving it a partial negative charge. What does that give this carbon? It gives it a partial positive charge. So even though it's not fully positive, like a cation, this partial positive charge does make it a subject for attack by a nucleophile, right? Because it's still positive, just not full positive. Okay, and finally, another example of electrophiles is anything that can make room for more electrons, right? So it doesn't have to be fully positive or partially positive, but if it, if it has room, right, like an empty orbital, for instance, to, to, to make room for more electrons, it tends to accept electrons or it can accept electrons and therefore act as an electrophile. By the way, another way to distinguish between these two, nucleophiles would be a Lewis base, right, because it's donating the electrons, and an electrophile would be a Lewis acid, just another nuanced way to think of them. Uh, so I hope this gave you a basic idea of the differences. Let's just go over a few examples and test your knowledge. All right, so if we look at this molecule right here, and if I were to ask you to identify this nitrogen as electrophilic or nucleophilic, uh, take a minute to think about it. Uh, the answer is <laughs> um, nucleophilic, right? Because of this uh, uh, lone pair right here. So if we were to put, let's say, uh, change it up a little bit and put, let's say, a bromine right here, which is more electronegative than carbon, what would make this, uh, what would this carbon be, nucleophilic or electrophilic? The answer is electrophilic, right? Because the electron density would be pulled towards the bromine, it would get a partial negative charge, 
and the carbon would get a partial positive charge. All right, so if I were to point here, would you say this region of the molecule is nucleophilic or electrophilic? The answer is nucleophilic, right, because it, it has a pi bond, and pi bonds, we said, are sources of electrons. They are nucleophilic. What if I were to point right here at this carbon, uh, the ketone carbon, uh, is it nucleophilic or electrophilic? The answer is electrophilic, because this oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, so it gets a partial negative charge. That gives the carbon a partial positive charge and makes it electrophilic, subject to attack by nucleophiles. Okay, so that's nucleophiles and electrophiles. Uh, I really hope that helped, and thanks for watching.